In this video, I'm going to talk about the time-independent Schrodinger equation. This video is part of a playlist on quantum mechanics. You can find the link to this playlist in the description below. This video is actually going to be uh, based upon some of the stuff that we've done in previous videos. We actually used the method of separation of variables to turn the Schrodinger equation into two ordinary differential equations. And we've dealt with one of those. We've de dealt with the one that has a time dependence. And we actually found what phi of t was. Now we're going to have a look at what little psi of x is. We're going to see how we can get that expression. So let's have a look at what we, we got at the end of uh, the method of separation of variables. We actually got this expression over here. So we had a uh, minus h bar squared over 2m. Then we had a 1 over little psi. And we also had a second derivative of psi with respect to x. And we had to add to that v. And that was all equal to this constant e, which we've called e because it's the energy of the particle. And this guy is the potential energy function. So this is not a constant. This is a function that depends on x. So all of this just depends on x. There's no time dependence in this part. And if you remember, this one was actually the right-hand side of an equation. And on the left-hand side, we had a similar ODE that had just a single derivative. It was just the first-order derivative, and it only depended on time. And that's the one we used in the previous video to solve for phi of t. And what did we get for phi of t? Well, phi of t, we found so phi as a function of t. This is the time dependence. Uh, this is e to the minus i e over h bar times time. So time is up here, and there's a constant, and it's actually an imaginary constant. So this is all being exponentiated, and this is our function phi. Now our job is to find this little psi. How can we actually do that? Well, first of all, I'm going to multiply this whole equation by psi and turn it into a more familiar form. So if I do that, I'm going to get minus h bar squared over 2m. This is going to get canceled out if I multiply by psi. We're going to get the second derivative of psi with respect to x. Then we're going to have a v times psi. And this e is going to be e times psi. So keep in mind, this guy depends on x, and this guy depends on x. This is also a function of x. This is the time-independent Schrodinger equation. I'm going to put it in a box because it's very, very important. This is actually what most of the work, uh, when it comes to finding solutions to the Schrodinger equation, this is where most of the work is. Right? Finding this phi is a trivial ordinary differential equation. This is still an ordinary differential equation, but this v could be a whole range of functions. And those functions can be quite complicated to solve when they're in an ordinary differential equation. So depending on what v is, we're going to have different techniques. So this guy is often abbreviated as the time-independent Schrodinger equation. I'll just write this little acronym. Time-independent Schrodinger equation. So it's the Schrodinger equation, but it's time-independent. Time doesn't show up anywhere over here. Everything just depends on x. And keep in mind, this is a one-dimensional equation. We're just dealing with 1D motion. So that's why there's only x. There's no y or z. And we're only dealing with the x-coordinate. So if you look closely at this, this term over here is linked to the kinetic energy operator. And this term over here is linked to the potential energy operator. So what we have is something that involves the kinetic energy and something that involves the potential energy. And if we go back to classical mechanics, specifically Hamiltonian mechanics, the Hamiltonian is often defined to be the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. So the kinetic energy plus the potential energy, we can think of that as a Hamiltonian operator. So we've got an operator acting on psi, and that's giving us back psi, but it's got an e over here. And this e is actually going to be called an eigenvalue. So we're going to have to deal with operators and eigenvalues. That's going to be later in this playlist. But just keep in mind that there's a lot of uh, linear algebra concepts that are going to show up when we solve this equation over here, the time-independent Schrodinger equation. But we can't actually go any further with this until we specify v of x. 
So what we need is we need to know what v of x is. Remember, v only depends on x. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do all this separation of variable stuff. If instead we had v of x and t, then all of this uh, would go into chaos, and we wouldn't be able to use the techniques that we used in the past few videos. So we're not assuming this. We're assuming this over here. So what we need is to specify the potential. We need that potential energy function, v of x. We also need to have the time independent Schrodinger equation. And from these two guys, we can use techniques for solving differential equations. And that can give us psi of x. And often what's going to happen is psi of x is not just going to be one function. There's going to be a set of functions that satisfy this. And that set is actually going to be used to construct any possible solution. So what we can do is once we know the psi of x, we can take the general capital psi, so psi of x and t, this general solution to the time dependent Schrodinger equation, this guy, and we can actually define it to be psi of x times e to the minus i e over h bar times t. Right? Remember what this is. This guy over here is just phi of t. So that's what separation of variables allows us to do. Once we solve the time-independent Schrodinger equation, that's going to give us all of these guys, the stationary states. And then what we have to do is multiply by this exponential factor with an imaginary uh, constant in the exponent. And then we're actually going to have all of these guys. And these solutions are what we're going to piece together to form any possible solution. So these guys can be used to form any possible uh, wave function that you can encounter living in this potential. So this is the beauty of solving the Schrodinger equation. And that's actually what most of the work in a lot of quantum mechanics is. You're solving the Schrodinger equation, and you're trying to see what the wave function is doing. So we're going to continue this discussion in later videos in this playlist. And you can actually find all of the videos in this quantum mechanics playlist if you click over here.